You're listening to episode 826 of the Father Bills Podcast. Welcome back. This week's episode is entitled Synod on Synodality, given on the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time, 2022. In today's gospel, we heard Jesus telling Simon to do something that seemed pointless or incomprehensible. Jesus told Simon to put out into deep water and lower his nets for a catch. Simon did, as we all know well that he had. He listened and obeyed Jesus. And the rest is history. Because Simon listened and obeyed to the Lord, he caught so many fish that he almost sunk both of his boats. After Simon's astonishment, and we heard the word seized him. Have you ever been seized? Like frozen? Just stunned? Don't know what to say? We heard Jesus counsel him and called him to his life's work, his mission. Jesus said, do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. In other words, do not let your fears or what seems to be impossible get in your way. Trust only in me. I will now guide you and help you to share the good news to the world. But this is not just for Simon. And it's not just for his apostles. It's for all of us. This is what the church is about. We are all being counseled by God who wants us to trust him and to tell others about the greatest news that has ever been. We have been rescued. The power of darkness and death no longer have power over us if we just submit ourselves to the Lord. We can go to heaven and heaven is real. Pope Francis is aware of this important moment in the life of Simon and consequently the church. He's also aware of the state of the church today and the issues and suffering of our world. Following the encouragement of St. John Paul II, Pope Francis desires that we reclaim our ancient way of being church, a way he calls a synodal church. And by doing this, he shared we will be more a listening church. And by being a listening church, we will become a church of closeness, the Pope writes. Closeness. The Pope shared is is God's own style where compassion and tender love permeate our lives. Do you see that much these days? By being a synodal church, we can be transformed by the love of God that happens when we journey together, share, and listen. We can truly, quote, put out into the deep the riches of our faith and have an ongoing, life-changing encounter with Christ. What hinders this encounter is a sense of being a solo artist. That's my words, not the Pope's. A Catholic who simply comes to Mass, but does not put the practice of Christ's teachings into play, or disregards those teachings, especially those that are most difficult. A solo artist in this regard ends up making up their own version of the Catholic Church that suits their politics, their opinions, and which insulates or isolates them at the same time from others who may be different than them. In essence, this kind of person makes up their own religion with themselves as the center, not Christ. And as I mentioned, the result is an isolation, at best, and pays a way to doom at the worst. For there is no salvation outside of Christ. Not in ourselves, not in anybody else. Clearly, 
Our world is badly divided and polarized. People have become partisan before being Catholic. Being a solo artist does not seek out communion with the body of Christ our Lord as he intended. God wants then to set us free, to guide us and to set us free from self-absorption, as the Pope writes, to revive what is dead and loosen the shackles and instead spread joy. Being, imagine being Simon. You know how to, you know how to fish. And you knew deeply what it felt like not to catch fish and the angst in that. He knew deeply the fear of failing. Maybe you have too. I know I have. When I fail, it's usually in front of 200 people at once. How about you? I mean, that's a small crowd, right? Simon could have easily said, No thanks, Jesus. I already know that I won't be catching any fish today. Thanks for your nice gesture. Move along. Yet he was surprised by joy, wasn't he? Why? Because he submitted himself to Jesus. The Holy Spirit was at work. And Peter became seized. Stopped in his tracks. He barely knew what to do once the unexpected and unexplained happened. Can you imagine? I mean, scrambling just to keep your boats afloat while the nets are tearing. Hey, John, James, help me out. And then they get in trouble as well. Both boats. But it's not just fear. They were, also, they were seized by joy at the number, the number of fish that they caught. Remarkable. This is what Jesus can do for us as a church. And as Pope Francis believes deeply, he's convinced that the Holy Spirit is calling us to be a renewed church. A church that lives in a synodal way. Now I've thrown out that word several times already. Synodal. Can you say it? Synodal. Yeah. If in Spanish it's a different way. I won't say what it is. I don't want to plant that, that articulation. But uh, pray for me as I offer these homilies in Spanish. And it's like, I've got to go back and forth. Because this is a word that even the Pope, or, uh, uh, Archbishop Sample had to learn. And the rest of us priests saying it over and over in a meeting as vicars like, okay, synodal, synodal. It's a synod, synodal. So what does it mean to be a synodal church or to have a synod, which is what we're having? In one sense, it is a way of being more open to listening to the Holy Spirit and listening to others. Pope Francis shared that this process has an protagonist, the one that's in charge, and it is the Holy Spirit. Instead of always arguing and dividing when we listen, in other words, not listening and just talk, we shut down our openness. But when we truly listen, we can learn more about others' hearts and reveal our own. And when we find ourselves in a closer communion with each other, we will be closer to Christ, filled with joy, and consequently more willing to share our faith and thus be more potent in our evangelization, which is why the church exists. This is not a club. We're a church. And our mission is to proclaim the gospel. So Pope Francis is calling for our whole, our whole church to learn a new way. Not learn a new theology. But this way involves... A listening process called synodalism. Sy- Got to say it right. Synodism, not cynicism, but like synod, synodalism. I can't even say it. I know. <laughs> synodalism, synodalism. Not. I, I don't even say it. There's another way I could pronounce it. But in order to learn this new way, he wants all the Catholic churches in the world to walk this journey, learning about the process by doing it. That's why he's called for a synod. In the history of the church, synods have been one of the ways the church has gathered people together to reflect on a particular topic. There's been one on the Amazon, 
There was a synod on families. The German bishops have called their recent gathering a synod, but it's incorrect. Pope Francis has corrected them. That's more like a council. But that council has to be done in union with Rome, which it wasn't, so they got to get corrected again by Pope Francis. Because they're talking about doctrine. And this is not about doctrine, what we're talking about here. Not at this time. In this synod, Pope Francis wants to teach us how to be synodal. How to be this way. And in fact, that is the end goal. To become synodal by being involved in a synodal process. So it's actually called the Synod on Synodality. That's the name of this synod. The Synod on Synodality. You might kind of roll your eyes like, what in the world? Because usually it's the Synod on the Family, Synod on the Amazon, something like that. It could be said that a synod is a process of becoming. A process that involves local churches in different phases from the bottom up. In an exciting and engaging effort that can forge a style of communion and participation that is directed towards mission. Again, what's the mission of the church? To proclaim the gospel. But if we're proclaiming different gospels, we're in trouble. If we're proclaiming our partisanship, we're in trouble. If we're proclaiming the true teachings of the church, that is, as the bride should do, we're in good shape. Lots of people who have left the church have left because of what they perceive the church to be when it is not. Or somebody's taught something that is not true. So there is no, in this case, discussion about what teachings we have. It's not a theological discussion. It's about how you are experiencing church. How is Christ enlivening you by your participation in the church? Now, this will be tough for a solo artist because they barely come to church. But by participating in a synod locally, we will play our part in building up the communion, our communion with the Holy Spirit and with each other. Pope Francis has already drawn up questions. A question like, when you come to church, what do you experience? This is my articulation. Uh, we'll publish the actual questions. Where does it give you joy? Where has experience in the church also revealed pains and hurts? Those are personal questions. And because the Holy Spirit is the protagonist, what will happen is we'll share those. We'll come today, or on those, the days that we'll have, and I'll share when they are. We'll come to the church here for an hour of adoration because it must be focused and centered in prayer first. Asking these questions that the Holy Father has offered us. Then after we've done the question, you know, reflected on them here before the Lord, not coming with a preconceived opinion or I'm going to make sure that this gets driven through like we're in some kind of parliament it's not a parliamentary procedure, but rather an openness with a blank slate and asking, what Lord are you calling me? What are you doing in my life? And then after that, going into the hall, and then we'll be in small groups around tables, and from that we'll be guided to summarize themes. So you'll talk about what you're, in your, on your table there, what that theme was, what the commonality was, and then we'll speak out each of the, the uh, tables. We'll be writing these things down, the leadership here, and then that will go on to the vicariate level. Well, it will be repeated in some similar fashion. It will be again distilled and summarized again. Uh, our basic papers will go along with the summary to the archdiocese. And the archdiocese will then also look at the other vicariates, summarize and find out where the themes are there. Remember, if this is just a human endeavor, if this is just like voting, you might get upset. Well, my voice is not being heard. We must trust that the Holy Spirit is at work. That through this process, what the Holy Spirit is doing in the church will be made more clear. But see, it will only be clear if we are people of prayer. If we're people willing to listen. From the diocese that will go to the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, summarizing all the dioceses of the United States, then going to Rome. And then Rome will receive all of the... the, the um, 
the councils or the conferences of the, United, of the world, their reflections to find an ultimate summary. And the summary is going to be, we're going to change this teaching. Or we're going to affirm this teaching. It's about, here's how we are being as church. Could be good. There could be things we need to work on. There may be issues. Maybe we're not listening well. And we need to be encouraged to do so. So there will be likely more other synods on topics. But we need to know how to do synod, synodality. Or do a synod. Or be synodal. That is, in collaboration, in discernment. Discernment comes from, you know, when we preach, we think about discernment to the priesthood. I'm not just saying, okay, I want to be a priest. A lot of guys will do this. They'll go to seminary. I think I'm really called to be a priest. And a lot of those guys get kicked out because that's just what they think. And they're just bound and determined to get their way. And they, in my class, out of the 17, three of us finished. That's not bad, actually. I was one of those, like, uh, I don't know about this. Well, Archbishop Leveda, who was the Archbishop at the time, he was looking through my paperwork, and he's like, well, I happen to walk in with some degrees. So he goes, how about you go to Rome? What do you think of that? I'm like, uh, Archbishop, I'm just here for a year, honestly. I don't even know what I'm doing. I've been thinking about this for a long time, but I am not sure. i got a lot of fears and concerns. And he just closed the book and goes, okay, we're done with that question. So the whole first year, I was like, um, I don't know. But I saw a lot of guys that were convinced. I was like your big doubting Thomas. Isn't it odd how it all kind of came out? So if you wish to participate in our local synodal process, save one of these two dates. One's a Thursday and one's a Saturday. Thursday, March 3rd at 6 p.m. By the way, this is in our bulletin. It's on our website. Or a Saturday in the morning, March 12th at 8 a.m., that way you can be part of this synodal process and you can still have the rest of your day. So we'll be done by 10.30. It's an hour of adoration, hour and a half of sharing and listening, summarizing, and then move on. So if you're a night or evening person or you work, that Thursday night might be for you. If that is not for you and you're more of a morning person or the weekend is better for you, that's why the Saturday morning is available. So again... Each component will be the same, except for the Thursday one will have a Spanish component to it. So, habla en español, uh, este día es para usted. Uh, tres de marzo. Each of these dates will then gather us together. And I hope that you come with hearts open to what God might do and reveal about how you're walking with him and how well or not well you're listening to him and others. For questions will be asked during adoration. And then after adoration, we'll share them amongst each other, listening to each other. It is my hope, and it is the hope of Archbishop Sample and Pope Francis, that we will learn what synodality is by doing it. A synod on synodality. And by doing it, we will be more prepared for other synods in the future where specific topics may be asked of the Holy Father. I hope we will be ready to participate in the work of the church by doing so. The church for the future. And share our stories and love about God and what he has done for us. And share that with the world that is dying to know and to experience Christ. This, my friends, is a potent antidote to the polarization and individualism that plagues our culture and our church. And I hope you will join me and one of those gatherings. Thank you again for listening to this episode of the Father Bill's Podcast. Now I encourage you to go to your pastor if you haven't heard about the synod or what synodal process you will be doing in your parish. Uh, Ask him and find out. Someone's doing it somewhere, hopefully. Uh, It is, again, an invitation from the Holy Father for all parishes. And so I encourage you to check that out. Now if you have any comments or questions for me, just go to my website, fatherbill.org, F-R-B-I-L-L dot org. And there you can see what's going on on my social media sites. You can email me a question right from, or a comment right from the website, and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. In the meantime, may God bless you, stay safe, and have a great week. Bye-bye.